Hello, I'm going to be showing another build that I'm doing. I'm just going to be basically showing you how you can implement this build that I kind of made up. It's a variation of what professionals do, but basically in this 1v1, both of us go random. And what I do first is I scout as soon as possible. And on the second try, I find them. First, I scout up over here. And you can see me being enthusiastic because my gamma was really low when I was playing. And the gamma, of course, is being the brightness. Anyways, um, you can see him being creeped out over there. Uh, basically, what I'm going to be doing is my Zerg opponent is going to be going for an expansion. I know that's what he's going to be doing, unless he's going to be going for an all-in, but that's kind of rare. I almost never see Zerg players go for a one base all in type of play. Most of the time it doesn't work at this type of juncture. And by juncture I mean diamond or platinum or masters. Because it's extremely hold easy to hold off a one base Zerg. So Zerg essentially needs to have one base ahead of your opponent at all costs. So anyways, I'm just putting down that barracks. I'm playing it standard right now. Not knowing exactly what to expect, and standard is the best way to play against a random opponent. And then until you know exactly what they're up to, whether it be a proxy, or they're going for a macro type of style play, you can do any variation off of your standard to adapt to their style of play. Remember, it's not how you want to play, it's how you're going to counter your opponent. So... It looks like he's just doing, there are two different standards for the Zerg. He could go for a 14 pool, and we can see him losing a lot of drones over here. I am kind of made a mistake with my SCV. The AI is kind of dumb. I make it right click to the go to the minerals. I try to make it go around, and I try to make it go over here at first. But anyways, there are two different types of standards for a Zerg player. He can go for a 14 pull or he can go for a 15 hatch. He prompts to go for a 15 hatch first and then puts down the spawning pool. I noticed this that he has the spawning pool down a little bit later than usual. So I instantly know that it's a 15 hatch and he's going for a macro type of style of play. So I instantly adapt to that and I throw down a command center on the bottom. I lift my barracks and use the Terran Ingenuity to be able to lift off any building I want and land it down and then I'm just gonna for fortify this as soon as possible make this a full wall and make sure no zergling can leak by because that's extremely essential if you have a stream of zerglings coming inside your base you're kinda screwed so I'm constantly queuing up SEVs uh, I'm not gonna be supply blocked for too long because I already have a supply deep on the way over here and I'm just prompting to get a second barracks. I already have my orbital command. And I feel like the Zerg player... I don't know. I wasn't thinking anything at this time. My only thought was I gotta get this clo closed off as soon as possible. Otherwise I'm screwed. And then I check for gaps in any of my wall. And I realize there's a gap over here. This marine can walk by. And surely a Zergling skinny enough to sneak by there as well. So I close it off and then I send my marine to make sure that there are no leaks on that side, that side, or over here. And as soon as that finishes, I'm going to go for pretty macro type of style of play. And I'm going to go for two basic Russian. And I'm, but just in case, I'm not going to be too protected in the beginning. I'm going to throw down a bunker. And I'm assuming my Zerg player already knows either he's map hacking or he's scouting. He already scouts with the Zergling uh, that I that I'm going for fast expansion. He already knows this. But what he should realize is that I'm going to have quite a bit of units. I have three barracks producing constantly. And I have a bunker. So I'm going to be able to hold off aggression pretty easily. And he's going for a Baneling's Nest. Now, I'm not aware of any of this, but I always like to play it safe. And I see that he scouts, and it worries me a little bit that he might go for some type of aggression. But I'm just going to spoil it for you. He's already going to go for aggression, since you can already tell by the Baneling Nest. And I didn't realize this. He got a spine crawler just randomly. I don't know why he did that. 
Is he afraid of banshees or something? Does he want the spine crawler to attack the air or something? I have no idea. It was just a waste of 100 minerals, waste of one drone. But at this type of league, like platinum, diamond, it doesn't really matter that much. And we see him just producing a bunch of banelings, and he's just going to go for that baneling bus. And baneling bus is pretty cheesy type of play. It's it's kind of an all-in. It doesn't seem like he has much of a backup plan because if we look at the income, I'm significantly ahead by four workers. And four workers is is quite a bit. And then I scan at the base. I don't know if you got a glimpse of that, but I see the bangling nest. And then I decide to send an SEV to see if there are banelings morphing outside of my base. And I start to prepare. I spread out my units a little bit. I could have done a little better spread. But we're just going to have to wait and see how this battle unfolds. Now he's going to need to kill a lot of SCVs, at least like 5 or 10 to be able to stay ahead. And then he instantly tries to take this opportunity. I see the lings. I press the hotkey for R to lift up the supply depot. He runs his lings by inside, not really causing that much damage. And if we look at the unit's lost tab, he's significantly ahead. He has supply block me, but because of Terran ingenuity, I can just have a supply drop down. And that's exactly what I do, and I'm no longer kind of supply blocked. Still supply blocked, but not as bad as being in the red. And we see our Zerg opponent just falling back. And I feel like he's just going to macro up after this, try to get ahead or something. He's already ahead in workers. But at this point, I'm already a little bit ahead in supply. I'm already starting to transition into... Uh, a mech type of play because I, what I noticed is that a lot of Zerg opponents have a pretty difficult time dealing with a mech style Terran because what a lot of Zerg players are used to is uh, tank marine and they'll just get mutilists and banelings and zerglings as their reaction to it and what I like to do is I like to get doors and I already know he has Banelings, so I think Thor is a perfect counter because if he's getting a Spire, that's already plus one. But I can use those Thors to soak up all that Baneling damage and God knows how many Banelings a Thor can absorb, like 20, 30 Banelings. So I would send my Marines back. I already have STEM researched. I made a slight mistake. I didn't get Combat Shield and I do have... Quite a bit of gas to get that. I mean, I can definitely afford it. Off of a... Why did I get three factories? I guess I wasn't thinking. Perhaps I should have put on an add-on on one of them. So that way I could just be producing Hellions out primarily out of them. So I scanned the space over here. Uh, I'm pretty sure you didn't catch a glimpse of that. But my instant reaction is I'm going to drop down the command center. And I'm going to try to keep up with the Zerg player. Uh, I don't really mind that I'm letting him drone up for a little bit. I probably could have pushed out and just won the game right now. But my motto is always to play it safe. And that possibly could have cost me a lot of games now when I think about it when I should have pushed out. But I let the my opponent just drone up too hard or just macro way too hard. So I decided to take out these rocks. I feel safe enough. And he decides he feels aggressive enough to just take out my army or something. But I do have quite a bit of production facilities. Even if he's able to take out this army, I'm going to have another wave coming in. And I salvaged this bunker because it was getting in the way of my tanks. And that was kind of that was kind of sucking. I have two Hellions because... I, I was just getting Hellions because I knew he had Zerglings. And why not? And... For some reason, I decide to go over here. I have no idea why. And then I move back, realizing not really too safe to move out right now. Because if he has masslings, that's going to really suck. And he decides to go back and forth. He's just waiting for his lings. And he's just dancing around back and forth. He's trying to get me over here. And then he's probably just going to come in through this angle, which is exactly what he's doing. And then he catches all my units off guard, and these banelings are going to have a heyday. Cleaning up my whole entire army, exploding a lot on the Thor, kind of taking a little too much damage there. And if we look at the units lost tabs, this was a spectacular play by him to be able to catch up just like that. 
He's still slightly be behind, behind by 100 minerals, but at this point, it's 3 base to 3 base, and the Zerg player needs to be ahead by a base to be able to technically stay ahead. And it just really sucks that I misread that. I lost my whole entire army because of that. And my reaction is, I'm going to produce a, a ton of Hellions, because he's just going to keep making Lings. I'm pretty sure he's not going to be sending any Roaches or anything like that. And then he pretty much sacrifices everything to take out this bunker. I felt like, nah, he could have gone away, I would have killed those eventually. But I was able to save this bunker thanks to this mule. Probably would have been better served just mining some minerals, but oh well. I'm constantly producing my Zerg opponent is not really spending his minerals too well. And now I'm starting to jump ahead of him in supply. Uh, one of my problems is that I'm not spending my... Oh. I was about to say I wasn't spending my mules too well, but then I realized I'm sacrificing a lot of mules to scan and see exactly what my opponent's up to, so that way I can react accordingly. And I wasn't paying attention here for a second, so I stemmed back, trying to save some of my marines. Kind of over... didn't even need to stem on that part, but over here, this is a huge deal, taking out a lot of overlords over here. This was six overlords. And he's going to be supply blocked, and this is going to cost a lot of minerals. But he does have a lot of minerals, so it's not really going to matter to him. He's probably not going to really care. Uh, my problem at this part of the game, or at this juncture, was that I should have put down a lot more production facilities. Because eventually this economy is going to start to hit in really hard. I don't know why these mules spawn behind. That's so annoying. But I was able to kill off all these spine crawlers. And I'm researching Blue Flame. This is kind of a timing attack. I didn't realize it was. And if we look at the... Sorry about that. If we look at the income, he's going to be losing a lot of drones right here. He probably just lost like 30 drones. And he just sacrificed a bunch of families to kill off of Thor. And I'm just splitting my marines up. And there you go. Sacrificing a bunch of more banelings onto Thor. If we look at the units lost that that is not cost efficient at all. And I split the Hellions, trying to make this as cost efficient as possible. And one Baneling for one Marine is always pretty legit. He actually does get one Spine Crawler up, so good for him. Uh, he's producing a bunch of Lings and Overlords because he's supply blocked. I don't know how he's supply blocked after me killing off all those drones. If we look at the income, I'm probably... Why did I stop producing SCVs? I felt like... I stopped at some points, and this is, you know, slight parts I can improve on. Just keep producing SEVs constantly until I get to 80, expand, uh, be a little more aggressive. I could have done some drops or some harass. I was just playing this very passively. It was, to be honest, it was a pretty passive game in general. I make a little mistake over here, losing two Thors, a few Marines. I send my reinforcements back, but... I actually don't really care that he killed that off. I knew I was way ahead after killing off all those drones. And at this point, I knew he was just going to not make any army units. He was just going to focus on re-droning. But this is what caught me off guard. He actually had a greater spire. But the problem was, he had no minerals because my attack significantly hurt him. And plus, he's investing a bunch of minerals into spine crawlers. He invested it into getting a new expansion, droning up. So his economy is not really going to be too fantastic. And... He, I'm assuming he's not going to be able to get that many broodlords out. And then here's the Terran Death Ball. A bunch of Thors, a few Marines, getting a few Hellions to back that up. I would say the counter to this would just be Mass Roaches or Mass Broodlords since I don't really have any Vikings. And this is the part where I put down a bunch of more production facilities to try to keep up with the great amounts of money that I'm receiving. And this is what I find interesting. He gets some festers and broodlords. Like, he should invest it into one tech. Either get them festers or broodlords. Because, uh, These fungal growths, he didn't really kill off the army. He was pretty close to killing off. But if he would have just had a few more broodlords, I felt like he could have pushed his back. Possibly. If he had three or four more instead of investing into them festers. At this point, I feel pretty confident with all my Thors. I know Mutilus are not going to be much of a threat. Banelings are not going to be much of a threat. 
Zerglings are not going to be much of a threat because of my Hellions and the Blue Flame. And another thing I can improve on was getting upgrades. And my Zerg opponent, he had two upgrades. I had 0-0 zero, zero the whole entire game. I don't even think I finally start getting plus one attack for my army. And the reason why I don't attack over here, I scan, I see a bunch of spine crawlers. I was like, why do I have to engage here? Go through this narrow choke. I'm going to have to run until I get a decent position to attack. Might as well just attack his man. He has nothing over here. Um, he sends a few marines. I, I send a few marines to take out these overlords. But I just realized this is a much better scenario. I can take out all his tech. Maybe I can cancel a few upgrades. I, actually, I wasn't even thinking that. But I was just kind of lucky I got his plus three. Even though it doesn't matter at this point in the game. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I was able to pretty much take it from here and just play extremely passively just keep producing units keep making supply deep builds I wasn't even worried about expanding because I knew he was pretty far ahead at this point he was double my units lost more than double and I had Vikings just in case if he was able to sneak a few broodlords somewhere and that's exactly what he did but I didn't even need Vikings to take out those broodlords because I have Thors to take that out. They don't do too well versus Broodlords, but the amount of Broodlords he has versus my Thors, I could easily take that out. So at this point, I decide I'm going to go ahead and try to kill this off. And then uh, as soon as I'm moving out, I realize he has an expansion over here, and I see that because of the creep, and I decide I should take this out first since he doesn't really have any spine colors and defenses here. I'm just going to strategize, even though it doesn't really matter at this point. Still played safe, and all his drones were over here as well, so there was no reason for me to take this out yet. And I take out his Broodlords with these, he calls out the GG. And that's basically how you can do a mech-style play. It, I saw a professional do this, it was... He was massing a bunch of Thors and Hellions, he essentially had his anti-ground for zerglings and he had his anti-air and uh, the zerg player never opted to get broodlord so that's how he was able to win with ease he was just doing a two base play i decide uh, i'm gonna try to copy it and do things slightly differently i'm gonna mix in a few marines here uh before while the economy hits in and i was basically able to win this game uh I would say pretty easily it wasn't very challenging i was worried at a couple parts where he was doing a baneling bust i thought he was just going to keep streaming things uh more and more and more but uh it's a pretty long rush distance so yeah i was able to hold that off felt pretty confident uh got my third etc so hopefully that all makes sense and hopefully you learned something and uh, yeah thanks for watching